everybody um today's video is definitely a little different than what i'm used to doing again <laughs> you know um we try new things to to kind of make everything else make sense but i wanted to make this video because one um this has been a significant part of my life for a very long time and two i am always always happy to share this part of my life with everyone that will stand to sit and listen to me babble on about it um so <laughs> the point of this video is to be kind of like an anniversary video. I I love what I do and I love that I can do it on my own um, as much of it as possible, you know? I genuinely have no qualms about Stars Burn Out. So, if you didn't know, Stars Burn Out is my webcomic where I explore being trans, being forced to fulfill a role that you never signed up for, um, family trauma, generational curses, stuff like that, um, without being so abrupt and loud about those things. I wanted this story when I first made it to be just a fun Alice in Wonderland romp with me and my friends. Um, shout out to everybody who was around back in like 2009 when I first started this. Uh, and like 2008 2009 when I first started this and remembers that point um shout out to you guys because that was rough <laughs> um, so yeah it was just like back then we didn't have the word or at least like American anime and manga fans did not know of the word isekai uh in abundance the way that we do now um so we had that, you know, Alice in Wonderland type story. Um, and that's what my original telling of Stars Burnout was. It was a Alice in Wonderland retelling where um, the main character was based after me and I got sucked into a, um, into a wormhole that took me to a place that made me the opposite gender. Um, and I have to, I have to say genuinely that the first run of Stars Burn Out was the, probably the main reason that I found out that I was trans, um, alongside my like preteen, teen obsession with gender bending. Um, I loved gender bending. I loved exploring how other people, especially, specifically my friends, not especially, but specifically my friends, um, and fictional characters, how they behave as the opposite gender type stuff, um, and the list goes on, but that, that's for another time. So that was the whole point in the beginning. Um, and now we are 17 years later. <laughs> Uh, I am fully out as trans. I fully divulge into being trans. Talking about being trans, talking about transsexuality, talking about just everything. Um, without shame or without hesitation, I am very proud of who I am today and the story that I tell today because Stars Burn Out circa 2009 was not Stars Burn Out circa 2024. It, it's, they're very different stories. Um, 
even though the base plot lines are the same. They are very interwoven while also being very different. Um, Riker is still our main character. He is still deeply based off of me and my journey with being trans. Rude. So rude. Hold on. Just turn that off for an hour. There. Um, yeah. Uh, he is still, like I said, he's still interwoven with me. He's still part of who I am and exploring how I navigate anxiety, fear, um, coming out, hesitance, stuff like that. Stuff like that, and I'm just very proud of who he is as a character and how I've taken him from this teenage boy to what he is now, which if you didn't know, all the characters in Stars Burn Out, except for some very obvious characters, are all over the age of 18. Um, so, say like college freshman age, so between 18 and 20. Um, which, that just because you're between the ages of 18 and 20 doesn't mean that you are the ripe age of being a college freshman, all that stuff. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blah, 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 blah. I'm not gonna yap about that. That's a whole thing that I can go on and on and on about. Um, so, all the characters are, are adults, pretty much. And I wanted to explore with Riker coming out as an adult again <laughs> and again and again and again and over and over and over again um because at the end of the day you that's part of the trans experience is that you have to continuously come out over and over and over and over again uh you meet new people you have to come out you talk to you make new friends you have to come out you start a new job you have to come out it's it's that repetitious thing um so I wanted to explore that with the story. I want to explore that with the story, and I am exploring that with the story. But I'm also exploring the side of being trans and being queer in general, where people kind of absolve that from you. Absolve the ability to be like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I am trans, these are my pronouns, blah, 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 by saying things like, oh yeah, we knew. Or oh yeah no it's no problem whatever um diminishing that experience for a queer person it hurts it really hurts um not that we should have to come out constantly and not that we should have to um constantly reintroduce ourselves to people but when we have to do that and you take that away from us it, it feels like shit it feels really really shitty um, so I'm exploring that. I'm also exploring, um, generational behaviors in black families and black family dynamics, especially, um, black families with large amounts of kids. Um, so I I'm exploring that with the story, um. And I think the biggest thing is that when a black author like myself says, I'm exploring these themes and these realities in my story, um, it's very expected to be handed to the reader. Um, and I'm not doing that. <laughs> I hate, I hate that. I hate when, um, when authors force the issue. I read a lot of black fantasy if you couldn't tell. I read a lot of fantasy in general, if you couldn't tell. And my favorite thing when it comes to reading fantasy and reading fantasy books and stuff like that is when the author understands, like, I don't have to spell this out because my readers have reading comprehension skills. 
that is something that I've seen recently in um, in the writing world uh, with my fellow authors and stuff like that, where they just stop allowing their readers to read. Um, there was a video that somebody made recently that was like, the main issue with people not having any reading comprehension skills is that they have no discernment skills anymore. So they can't be like, oh, this is about the uh, socioeconomic uh, ruling class and how they are absolutely brutalizing the more uh, average working class, stuff like that. Um, people people can no longer people no longer have the ability to like analyze what they're reading i'll say that um i was recently reading a book um that i had to just stop reading after the first chapter because they were very much taking the experience of blackness and just shoving it down your throat like not not letting the reader breathe you know you're not letting the reader reader like read into this like oh okay this is the experience that this character is having it, it very much generalized and just forced the issue and like i said i read fantasy books i read fantasy books and i read horror books i don't read much outside of that genre um except one set of books which is the fangirl books which is like teen romance um and those those are like my one exception <laughs> uh but yeah like fantasy high fantasy fantasy romance stuff like that is what i usually go towards and when i see other black authors that are like here's my black fantasy novel um they very much shove the blackness aspect and I don't want to do that with Stars Burn Out at all. Hold on a second. This is going to be a long video. <laughs> um, I don't want to shove the blackness uh, at people. I don't want to shove the queerness at people. I don't want to shove the transness at people. I feel like I should be able to make it obvious once and that's it uh especially with a visual novel or a graphic novel or a visual novel oh my goodness i'm sorry i am also developing games so <laughs> just ignore me <laughs> um but with graphic novels and web comics and and written novels i i should be able to be like this character has dark chocolate skin and that's it and that's it that's all um so I don't have to constantly go back and say, this character has this, this character has this, this character has this, over and over and over again. Um, but yeah, back to Stars Burn Out. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone that reads Stars Burn Out. It means so much. I'm getting teary. <laughs> Uh, it means so much to me that people actually take the time to sit and read Stars Burn Out, whether you're doing it on your phone or you're seeing the pages on social media where I'm posting them, or if you're reading it directly from the website, like, I don't think it's understood how important and how uplifting it is that people are reading my comics because for years and years and years and years I was convinced that I was never gonna have anybody read this comic I was convinced that this comic was just gonna be something that I make and then abandon because nobody's gonna read it and at the end of the day that wasn't true I've had people reach out to me and be like I love your comic um, my friends love the comic they they think it's very 
well made and very good. They they enjoy every aspect of it. Um, I have friends that are obsessed with specific characters, and I never, ever, ever, in my wildest dreams, thought that I would get to that point. And no, I'm not like a big wig heavy hitter in the comic scene. I'm 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 not. I'm an independently published, very small comic creator that makes one comic and uh, plans a bunch of others. And Stars Burnout has been, for the better part of these 17 years, the most consistent project that I have ever worked on. I have never... In my 28 years of life worked on a project this consistently that wasn't like graded or anything like that I am proud of who I was then when I first started this and I am even more proud of myself now like I can sit with my chest held high and say that I created a story that fits the genres that I love, that fits the story points that I love, that that just tells a tale in a way that doesn't center around one specific thing. Um, a lot of Stars Burn Out is inspired by just experiences that I've had in like D&D and like the fantasy books that like make me so so happy I I have invested so much time into Stars Burnout that <laughs> at this point if somebody were to walk up to me and be like hey You've, you've worked on Stars Burn Out for 17 years and you are almost finished with it, at least the writing of it. If you sell it to us for $10 million, we'll make sure that you are credited for the story and blah, 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 blah. I would probably say no. Like, yeah, I'm dealing with a lot of financial hardship right now, but I want to see this through until the very end. I want my hand on the paper until the very end that's how important stars burnout is to me i i don't think it's frequently understood how absolutely important it is for an artist to carry through on a project um i i like to think about fine artists and how they have a project they go through the project and they're busting out piece after piece after piece after piece and how it must feel to finish that series of paintings or photo or photographs or anything like just to finish it and to have that moment of i did it so i i don't think i'd ever make a deal like that i would i would i would i don't think i could i i would want to see stars burn out all the way to the end of the road that being said <laughs> starting next year you're gonna start seeing pages um that i'm making this year i th i truly think and this is a piece of advice that I'm going to give to any young comic creator if you can hold off don't tell anybody about your project yet don't tell anybody about the story or anything like that just hold off and get at least two or three chapters going first and I mean fully finish them finish them proofread them everything and then start posting it this way you have a buffer of time the greatest thing that I've done for myself regarding Stars Burnout was the multiple revivals. This is not the first time I've done a revival. It's the first time in a while, but it's not the first time, period. Um, 
the first revival was after I had made the very, very first chapter. Um, and I was like, oh no, I ran out of pages. So I took it down. And, and like I said, if you were there back then, you'll know. I posted this on Star on DeviantArt. <laughs> Yeah, Stars Burnout was originally posted on DeviantArt and Smack Jeeves, um, and that's where it lived. And then the websites changed, accounts got lost, stuff like that. I think if you look up My Sweet Prince on DeviantArt, you'll still find it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but if you if you ever want to, to look it up, I think um, it's... The original chapter is still posted um but you know doing a revival is not only a good marketing tool but it is a great 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 consistency tool i think that the best the best thing that i've ever 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 done for myself creatively was say I'm not posting this yet. I'm not posting this online. I'm not ready to post it. I'm not going to post it. So I, you know, I won't post it. Um, but if you take that moment and you take that time to like set up a buffer, you'll be good. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm not going to be posting new pages until 2025 august of 2025 is when the last pages of chapter six will be posted then i'm gonna take a week and i've set it up this way specifically so that i have time to like make sure all the marketing stuff is good all the update calls are made and all that stuff um lit literally put a week in between your your chapters um, so schedule a chapter and then when that chapter ends, put a week between that last page of that chapter and the first page of the next chapter. Give people that breathing space so that they can be like, oh, hey, this new chapter of da, 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 and they can review the chapters. Think about it like, um, I don't know if you guys watch or listen to this podcast. It's a podcast that reviews the chapters or the episodes of Lore Olympus. I, I'm pretty sure that's the name. Um, sorry, I haven't read it in a while. That's why I forgot the name. Not not because I don't read it at all. It's just been like years since I've read it. So um, I do follow Rachel. Uh, I think Rachel follows me on Blue Sky, I think. Um, but regardless of if she does or if she doesn't, um, actually I can confirm it right now. Give me a second. <laughs> I think she was one of the first people to follow me. Um, nar, my bad. I remember she followed me on something. Do I remember what that something is? No. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't remember what that something is. But it's okay. Anyway. Um. There's a podcast that reviews the chapters of... Um. They review the chapters of Lore Olympus. And they just talk about it and they just go back and forth and they're like, yeah, this is this and this is this. And I really think this, this would happen. And I really thought this would happen. Like they go back and forth that week between your chapters gives your readers time to do exactly that. It gives them time to be like, dude, I thought this was going to happen. I thought that was going to happen. Oh my God. It's so cool that this character did this. So in order to really be efficient and to really like help yourself out schedule your chapters and build up a really good buffer um 
And when I say build up a good buffer, I mean that. Like, if you build up a good buffer, you will have an efficient way of posting, right? Um, I feel like if I had started doing Stars Burn Out from the very beginning, doing that, I would have excelled, excelled in regard to all that stuff. Hi, my name's Skylark, and I'm going to take the next minute to try and sell you on my webcomic, Stars Burn Out. Stars Burn Out is the story of a young trans man that is starting out college life. He meets a, another young man named Alex, and things start to get a little weird for his life. A series of events starts to happen around the people that he thought he knew and trusted the most. But the situations peak when his best friend pushes him off of a balcony. After traveling through a dark and long tunnel latent with the smell of rust, he meets a man that keeps saying that he's his father. Though he tried to escape multiple times and is very angry and confused, he ends up in a room where he meets a Versat named Rizma, who tries to help him as best she can. And that was just the first four chapters. Because that was just the first four chapters, I'm just going to read the plot synapses in another part of this, so please stick around and watch the next video to learn more about Stars Burn Out. If you're interested in reading, you can visit the comic at starsburnout.webcomic.ws or visit my- Hi, welcome to part two. Riker is a transmasculine elf that was sent to Earth to live his formative years as a human student. His family has been destined to save the four worlds, Earth, Tarasia, Faisalia, and Thinmore, from the wrath of the gods. His siblings before him have done all they can, and now the final steps rest solely on Riker's shoulders. Through his journey, he must help solve the problems of the Tarasian people while overcoming his own lost memories and confused feelings about his gender identity. There are multiple reasons for me to write this comic, but the main one was that I wanted to see myself in a fantasy setting just like anybody else. You don't really see black trans people in big fantasy settings, so I took up the mantle and decided to do it on my own. And I hope that you guys can kind of see yourself in each one of these characters. There's tons that are LGBT, disabled, people of color, and it means a lot to me when you guys do enjoy my comic. Like I said, this is gonna be a very long video and I'm gonna like include a lot of b-roll and some like live footage like you saw in the beginning of the video um of me just doing some some stars burnout work stuff like that um anyway so I genuinely genuinely feel like Stars Burn Out is one of the only things that I have been consistent with. Um, not stylistically, obviously, because over the course of years, you know, things change, new inspiration comes in, old inspiration goes out, stuff like that. So, you know, things change. But as far as like, the characters staying the same, the this staying the same, the that staying the same. I think Stars Burn Out was like the only thing that I was consistent in that regard to. I... When I say I love this story, I mean it with my entire heart. I love this story. I sometimes feel like I get a little bit overly confident about the story and then I go and I pitch it to a publisher and they're like mm, this isn't it's not what we need it's good though and I'm just like devastated because I'm like no this is this is a good ass story I love this story and I'm I put so much into it but the reality is it's not for everybody and I'm not making it for everybody I'm making it for me and for the people like me and for my friends and for the, the friends that enjoy stuff like this because I have friends that don't enjoy fantasy they don't think it's very interesting um, but for the friends that do and myself like that's who I'm making this for that's the group that I'm thinking about when I'm making it um 
what else is there to say? I mean, I can go on and on about the characters and, like, tell you every little detail about the characters, but that, that would kind of defeat the purpose, you know? That would kind of make it null, um, to what what is actually going to happen in the comic because characters are gonna change it's a story it's gonna be progressive um i guess with that in mind and with that being said i will um kind of list off off the top of my head some of my comic inspirations um because I have a lot. Um, the first comic inspiration that comes to mind when I think about specifically Stars Burn Out, because, you know, I have other comic projects that I work on. Um, but specifically with Stars Burn Out, the first one that I think of is like Saga. Saga is so deeply, deeply inspiring i don't i don't know how to explain it but it's so just incredible um i love the characters the artwork is gorgeous i really do want to collect all of the saga releases but i don't have one the space and two the money um the next big inspiration and you might you might laugh i don't know if you'll laugh but you might laugh um the next big inspiration is the adventure time comics um if you didn't know humble bundle is doing a uh i think it's a charity bundle um where you can get all of the adventure time comics for like 18 bucks which isn't bad um but all of those really inspire me. I have two of the physical copies and all of the digital copies and they are so fun. <laughs> uh, it inspires me to include a bit of fun in Stars Burn Out. Another big inspiration is, and if you don't know what this is, I need you to go on Spotify and listen to it because it's on Spotify completely free for you to listen to. Um, the Adventure Zone comics <laughs> yeah the adventure zone comics inspire me so deeply carrie is such a beautiful artist and and the way that they just take the mcelroy's words and just take them and just mush them into this like incredible incredible piece of work just it makes me want to like like I, I just <laughs> like I want to like scrap everything and start a new comic like all D&D all D&D when I read those comics they're they're so so good um another one is Vampire Sabbath if you don't read Vampire Sabbath it is online 100% free to read go read Vampire Sabbath oh my god um What's another another one? Um, <laughs> oh, I read so many. Um, let's see. I have a list. I have a very very extensive list of comics that I read. Um, comics and mangas. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, is Blanco one of them? I think. Blanco was one of them. Blanco was supposed to come back, but it's not, it's not back yet. Um, stylistically, CB Webb does, oh my god, the style is just like, when you're eating your favorite dessert, and it just sits in your mouth, and you're just like, basking in the flavor, in the flavor. That's what, that's what I think of when I think of CB Webb. Um, it's just like a really, really awesome dessert that just makes you 
Mm. It just makes you happy. Um, the property of hate is one that inspires me, not specifically for Stars Burnout, but just in general. It inspires me a lot. Um, and the last one that I will say is what's your name the star face fruit star fruit face star face star face uh hold on <laughs> i bought her book her name is star and i'm sure you know who she is but i bought her book because i was like huh i'm having a very hard time writing my comics and specifically web comics. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get this book and I'm gonna use it as a resource to improve myself, improve my work, improve what I do. Um, did it work? Hell yes. <laughs> I grab that book every time I start working on a comic. Doesn't matter if it's Stars Burn Out or Mushrooms or Pillars or anything like that. Every time I work on a comic, I grab that book. The Starfish Face. There we go. That's that's her name uh, online. The Starfish Face. Uh, I don't remember the name of her comic, unfortunately, but the book, How to Make Web Comics, that she made. Beautiful book. Absolutely amazing. And it does touch on something that is so, so, so freaking important that a lot of these, like, um, youtubers online resources stuff like that doesn't talk about is the marketing how to market your webcomic she includes an entire section an entire section of the book dedicated just to the marketing so you know Okay, I think that's it for me. Um, this wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, the very last thing that I want to say is happy 17th anniversary, Stars Burn Out. From the very beginning to the very end, I am going to stick with you as long as you allow me. I hope that you guys feel the same way. I hope that you stick with me <laughs> from the to the very end with this story and I hope I hope that even if you have been here for a while and you've grown out of it that you enjoyed every moment that you were here. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will talk to you later. Have a great rest of your week and have an even better weekend. I know things are hard right now, but we'll make it through. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, not specifically this video, but like some other fun videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. I try to upload every week. And if you are also interested in seeing me re-debut on twitch.tv, visit the link in the bio or in the little video description. I have a link to my Twitch there. I will be attempting to re-debut soon. Um, do I know when? No, no I don't. But I will try my best to uh, start getting that sorted out. Alright, have a great day.